Yo, what is going on guys? It is Pirate here and boy am I excited for today's video. So this has been a video I've been wanting to film for quite some time now and me and another YouTuber have been trying to get done but we've just had so many constant interruptions that we haven't been able to get it done when we wanted to. So I'm glad we're finally ready to do it. Now this YouTuber I'm going to be filming with goes by the name of Christopher Scott. Some of y'all may have heard of him. Many of y'all on my channel probably have. He's basically a fish YouTuber and he's done a little bit about reptiles and other animals. But it is my job today to introduce him into the reptile world a bit more. Now you guys know I'm a reptile guy just based off my reptile room. And I don't really deal with fish or really any other animals too much. I will a little bit but not too much. And that's the other thing. A lot of fish people don't like reptiles or don't own reptiles and then there's a lot of reptile people who don't own fish so we've got something crazy for you guys to check out that is basically going to combine the two hobbies into one if that makes sense what we are going to be doing guys is building a ginormous paludarium setup now for those of y'all that don't know what a paludarium is this is one i have in my reptile room here this one's quite the size smaller than the other one but a paludarium is basically where you integrate water and land together so you can put fish in one side or you can put reptiles on the other or some in both really whatever works for the size enclosure you're going to be using now that cage over there is a uh, 12 by 12 by 24 i believe and the cage we're going to be building is about twice that size now the palladium we are going to be building in this video is 18 by 18 by 36 inches so it is not a small cage so guys let's get started with planning this build out now when you're building a cage and specifically like a bioactive setup or a paludarium or anything like that that needs to look really good there's a lot of planning that has to go into it you can't just throw your materials in there and say you're done you have to really figure out where you want everything to go because once it's in there it's staying so good. guys let me cut to some footage i had already filmed of me basically kind of planning it out so first things first, we need to get that piece of paper out of here. Whoa, and it's gone. That worked perfect. Alright guys, so first let's see where we're going to want to put some of our cork pieces. Now obviously we're not going to foam in yet at all. We're going to wait till we are for sure ready where we want it to go. And once Chris gets here and is okay with how it's positioned. Basically when laying your cork in, you just want to make sure that it's going to hold. You can always use other materials like other pieces of cork, uh, tape and other things like that to help it hold. For now, just since we're getting kind of a base setup, I'm just going to kind of put it in there and set it up how I think it looks somewhat decent. Get another super cool piece. This is will be great for planting or as a hiding spot for whatever goes in here. Alright, so now we have this giant like two and a half foot, three foot piece and it's super dope, but we gotta take this thing outside and cut it down. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Now that is much, much okay, bigger. guys, so we are now back inside with most of our cork cut down, as you can see, and some of our tools that we're going to be using all laid out and prepared. Now we are simply waiting for Chris to get here so we can start this build. So I just noticed coming down my hill, speeding, a beautiful jeep oh snap who's here hey it's the man himself How you what's doing? going on nice camera i know that, that's a pretty nice camera too yeah like it's like you're looking in a reflection yeah seriously like you're like a professional youtuber now oh man in it like that three cans of waterfall foam some coconut soil bedding a bunch of cork which is actually in here we have a, a wood dowel which we'll talk about what's going to happen with this i would have never thought about this but the expert totally told me why we needed that and uh that's what we're going to start with now if you guys remember when i built my waterfall for my turtle enclosure i had this stuff on my hands for like 16 years afterwards <laughs> and we definitely have gloves for yeah that. rubber gloves are are the key for using that phone exactly where did you learn so much about silicone and and reptiles and the phone man? Uh, well i mean the you know that's actually i don't know how i figured out the silicone and the actually yeah i do it was from you <laughs> no butternut squash that's called a yellow butt plant i think no that's a yellow that's a lemon button fern good job yes this right here is called a splash of sorted. I don't even know what that yeah, means. It's just, it's, 
That fern back there has gotten twice the size it was when we got it. Yeah, it's getting giant. That's a bromeliad. Yep. Um, our little, that is called a... It was a... I don't remember. It's a butterfly. But Yeah, butterfly something. Yeah. Butterfly what? Just one butterfly. This is going to be our one audience here watching us as we build this cage. Pretty neat looking creature there. That's so guys, as Chris, our building expert, explained, we've got a whole long list of supplies. He's going to be teaching me how to build this paladarium because I have no clue what to do. So let's just... Alright guys, this so next we have this pump that Chris actually picked up. It's 140 gallons per hour. So that'll be just enough if not more than enough to get the water from the bottom to the very top of the cage so that'll be good to go so what we've done here guys so far is i've just covered this pvc pipe with this cork that i cut down and it looks a lot better and then now we're going to choose where we want our, lot, our waterfall to well, guys it has been a few minutes and we have gone absolutely wild with this enclosure as you can see we've got a lot we're going to do with this uh thanks to chris for helping me out on planning this out we've got a lot we want to do to get done with this enclosure so yeah first our hose goes all the way through here it's already super hard to tell where it's at and it'll kind of drain out here hopefully it should and then we'll have our waterfall go straight down it'll kind of break up as it goes down we'll foam it all in and it should look super so good guys we've gone our structure here done now it's basically time for us just to start foaming everything in it looks really good so far so i cannot wait to see how this finished product turns out and chris here he's going to actually be partially foaming this i'm going to show him some of the ways some of the tricks of the trade when it comes to building an enclosure like this so we'll get some good footage of him foaming this enclosure as well One mistake a lot of people make is they'll foam it like this or they'll foam it upright you want to make sure you have it upside down at all times it allows everything to sink to the top of the can and exit the can properly so, so first we'll have this here chris the second one i'll let you uh do here as well just oh okay all right so everything's in place we're good to go all right, three, I'll start on this side, actually. Two, one. All right, that's There Whoa. we go. So here we go, Gage, if you want to get in a little closer. All this will carve back if you feel like it. All these corners, we'll build it up across the side here. Now we got to work somewhat quickly with this all across. You want to get all the cracks and crevices really well. And then anything that we may or may not miss, we can go back over so that's not too much of a problem here. Let's see, just go across here. Really well. Build it up a little bit. Now we're going to cross this tube here. Get all this foamed in. Now guys, keep in mind this foam expands like crazy so you don't need too much. You don't want to go crazy because this will push out through here and whatnot. So just keep that in mind. Now, Chris, if you want to go ahead and grab this can, maybe, and you can start on your portion if you'd like. Going on there, as you can see. Just, yep. And we want to cover this back, all of it, right? Correct, just soak it in foam. We'll get another can going as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this coconut soil bedding here, and now that the foam is somewhat in place, we're going to take it and we're just going to kind of dust over it. You don't want to be shy. You want to add more dirt than really it would be necessary and at the end we'll shop back a bunch of stuff out we'll just keep adding dirt all the way across here and i'll vacuum all this up as well just dirt all the way across and then whatever is not coated we'll just silicone later on if we need to give it a few hours just again here and here all the way through sprinkle it across fairy dust style now I'm going to take that second can and we're going to work our way down a little bit more. So shake it up and then if it'll go. If it'll go. <laughs> Two hours later. Alright, we got to work quickly here. Let's see if this will work now as we please. So now I'm just going to get there. I'm going to kind of get back over a little bit more here. That's what we're looking for. Push a little bit here, across the bottom here. Okay. 
Uh. Alright, so now we put it up here. We want the whole inside thing, or the whole bottom part of this here foamed up, and that's good. Just shove your fist down in there and just fill it up. Yeah, maybe. No? No. No, okay. Yeah. Alright. That little corner there. And I would assume wherever you're putting foam now, you're also going to cover with dirt, right? Correct, yep. Okay. So we'll get ready to get that going here shortly. This little crack right here, we're going to foam in as well. So yeah, we'll get ready to start adding dirt if you want. That works, and I'll just set that in there for now. Alright, so yeah, we'll just dirt over here. Get it all. So, what is the difference between, or so like, what is the purpose of silicone before you dirt? So like in some situations, like I was telling you. How so, I yeah, so as the reason why we do that is sometimes that foam will push off the dirt or if you don't dirt at all, you know, that foam gets a real, uh, like it's very slick. So it has a hard time, you know, dirt will have a hard time sticking to it, obviously. So what we do is we silicone that, we carve it, then we silicone it to allow the dirt to stick better. And then we can also carve it to foam it, to uh, form our own texture, our more rocky looking shape, make it a little bit, uh, a little bit more natural for the animal. So. Okay. Yeah. That looks about good right there. And now, make sure, just give it a quick glance over, make sure we're not missing anything. So, like, you want to get more dirt down into the foam that's inside of the cork, or um, does that really matter? Yeah, it doesn't you're gonna, really matter that much because you're gonna still, you're still not finished as far as foaming, right? Correct. And then you know, plants will go down there too, so not much is gonna be down there except for a plant. That's basically it, and then just... You have any small rocks in your yard? Small rocks? Uh, I might. Let's go look. All right, let's go check it out. I mean, we got a couple of minutes since this is all covered, yeah? Correct. The pericardium, mm -hmm. and underneath this is going... Okay. I have no idea what I'm mean. here. He, he just felt wearing the rubber glove made him I, feel I like a like, doctor. He's like, I'm a doctor now. All right, you got this female doobie. Let's see if she'll get it for us. Oh, there we go. That was nice and quick. Good job, Gucci. Good job. Alrighty, so it is still drying. It's got a few more minutes, but once it is completely dry, we're going to proceed to silicone all the parts that we need to silicone. Like right here, as you can see, it's still kind of clunky, so we need to cut that down quite a bit, but it's looking pretty darn good. So basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna carve just a little bit to see how it's looking on the inside, to see if it's dry, and if it's not, then we'll have to wait a little longer. It's not cooking steak. It's not dry. I can yeah. see it on the knife. Yep. So Look at that. the outer layer is, but the inner layer is not quite there, but that's fine because then that'll just cover it up more. So that's fine there. Um, we can let that part dry a little bit more. Let's see how this looks here. It's like, that's good still. We go a little deeper though. Just carve it with our knife here. Make sure to clean up after yourselves. Don't let that foam get everywhere. It's messy and it's annoying and it sticks to everything. Dry or not dry. So that part looks good here. So all this top piece, we'll just carve down so that it's flush so that we can put our lid on the cage better and obviously keep it secure. We're just gonna go across here, right off the center. Perfect, so all this is dried, good to go. Once again, go right up the center. See how this looks. Oh, it's a little open there, but for the most part it's dry once again. So we'll just make sure, you wanna make sure it's flush because obviously when you put your lid on, you want to make sure you're going to have a good seal so that your animal can't push out or squeeze out and you don't lose your animal because that would not be very fun. So that's all we're going to basically do. Just carve whatever is dry and then we'll add our silicone which y'all will see here shortly. So when you're carving, the main reason we're going to carve here is because as you can see it's really slick and smooth right here. But then when you carve it, it creates that rough, more textured area. That will be good for when we decide to add our silicone and then add our dirt. It'll also give it more, um, but it'll give it more depth and it'll make it look a whole lot better. So let's keep carving everything around. It's also good though to expose some parts because it allows air to push through and it'll help dry some of it quicker. So that's good. That's good. All right, guys. Well, it has been some time and Chris is going to head out. I'm basically going to take it from here with the silicone and the carving and all that good stuff. And then here in a little while, you'll see part two where we actually set up everything else. So that'll be interesting. And make sure you comment below and let, let Christian know if you're from my channel out here checking him out. Yeah. Just so he has an idea. For sure, for sure. So yeah, I'll catch up with you guys here shortly. Guys, it's super hard to tell, but look. 
fights every now and then. There's like, one and all. There's the other. He's literally. I know this is so random, guys, and off topic, but I thought that was so crazy. Wow. Yeah, so I got them separated. Look, he tore his lip apart. They were going crazy. That's insane. Well, let's continue on with the rest of this video. Right, so it has been a few minutes, as you can see. We've been just continuously carving. All you're going to do is just simply carve that foam. Once it's dry, you'll get this flaky, spongy foam material. And then you can just simply take this over here and just throw it in your pile of trashed foam. Some things that'll happen is this foam will kind of push out. As you can see, it's already starting to harden. We're simply just going to break it off just like that. Throw it again into our pile of trash. And as you can see, it cleans it up a bit more. Now I got some on my fingers. But you just gotta continue to pick at that foam. You really wanna get rid of this clear, shiny stuff because it really gives it a hard time to uh, stick. As you can see, there's barely any on here. So once you do get rid of that, you'll just continue to carve until you get this more rough textured foam. And I'll show you what we do next. Alrighty, so we are locked and loaded here. We have our silicone. Basically, all you're gonna do, it's very, very simple. Any of your carved material, like right here, you'll just go on over, just like that. Pretty satisfying, honestly. Just like that. Now, since we got a good, you know, area right here, you'll just take your coconut fiber bedding here and just sprinkle it across nice and gently. That's all you need. And then you'll let that sit for about an hour or so and you will be good to go. Alrighty guys, as you can see, so we're just continuously adding this heavy coat of silicone all the way across here on all this carved material. That's all that you really need to do. Just kind of carve it really nice and then add your silicone. And once you add your silicone, you'll put your gun up, you'll get your dirt here, grab our handful of dirt and you'll just sprinkle it all across. And then after a little while, it'll just dry over. As you can see here. See if we can roll it off my arm here. I'm not really doing it right. I don't even know. So yeah. So one thing, one mistake a lot of people do when building a bioactive is they'll just put the foam in, the cork in, silicone it, and that's it. They don't do anything else. Well, one simple thing you can do to change that is get some rocks, some little pebbles and whatnot, and that'll really change the game of how your enclosure looks. So as you can see here, you can just kind of stick it in and create your own shelving, really. So you put that rock in, then we'll put our next biggest size here. This is a really nice piece. So we're gonna put that in right about here, as you can see. Then we'll put this chunk right here. And see, it kind of creates a nice shelving to change up how your enclosure really overall looks. So definitely keep that in mind when you are building a bioactive setup. Hey guys, so once again, another good piece of rock here that'll make a great shelf. So let's put that right on this piece of silicone and we'll silicone back over to make sure it stays but as you can see it creates a nice natural shelf well holy smokes guys this is how it looks so far now tomorrow I might do some more I'm just gonna do that off camera though I am absolutely tired but this cage looks so dope especially after we added some rocks in as you can see there so it looks pretty dang cool so Gage, what do you think about the cage well, it looks right out I agree for sure. Well guys, that is about it for today's video. Now I sure hope you guys enjoyed that. It's been a long uh, time in the making that I've been trying to do this build with Christopher Scott. So I'm so hyped that we finally could get it done. So guys, this is how it's looking so far. It looks absolutely sick. As you can see, there are ledges going on. The waterfall is going to make it so dope. I don't want to give away too much because we've got a ton ahead of us. So guys, let me know. There's a bunch of people that came and subscribed to my channel from Christopher Scott's shout out. So down in the comment section below, let me know which one of you or how many of y'all came from the shout out that he gave me. But thank you all for subscribing. We are literally like 25 away from a thousand people at the time of filming this. So we are getting closer and closer to a thousand. Now I promised you guys, you guys, you guys right here. I promised y'all that once I hit a thousand, 
we will be doing a reptile tour, so stay tuned for that. Other than that, guys, make sure y'all go follow my Instagram, the real Pyrotoad YT. Please go follow it up. I'm posting at least every other day, so y'all can stay up to date with what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Other than that, guys, leave a huge, huge like for on this video. It'll let me know that y'all want to see more of this right here, because I think this is pretty cool. I think y'all would want to see more of that, but I can only tell if y'all like the video. Other than that, guys, as I've said, we're on the road to 1,000 subscribers, so please subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And other than that, just stay tuned, because I'm always uploading crazy quality content. Also, one thing I'd like to mention is I really want to give a huge shout out to Christopher Scott. Now, I know some of y'all already came from him, and y'all already know what's up, but those of y'all who haven't, Go subscribe to Christopher Scott. He's got great videos, and I really enjoy his content, so I think you guys would too. And if y'all subscribe to him, y'all be able to see more on this build on his channel. Other than that, guys, I will see y'all in the next video. Part 2 will be coming out soon. Peace!